G'day Hammerheads, today we are doing Milwaukee and it's uh, 12 volt versus 18 volt head to head. Let's see how they stack up. Sorry, head to head. There we go. Alright, so let's take a look at the 18 volt first. So this one is an older design. You can kind of tell by this, uh, this handle styling here. Also, it is brushed. It's not fuel, as you can probably hear from the motor. Very brush sounding. So this guy has been around since about 2012. And, you know, as a subcompact rotary hammer, it's one of the first ones ever, I think. So, you know, nice one, Milwaukee, for being ahead of the curve there. Uh, she's got a drop motor design, so you can see the motor is here, and then your gearbox and hammer up that way. Uh, and that does make it nicely balanced when you've got the battery on there, so the center of gravity is sort of here-ish. So, you know, it works very well with one hand, so that's nice. It doesn't have vibration dampening, but, you know, it doesn't really need it, it doesn't hit that hard. Uh, and you do get a nice direction of force when you're drilling, so pretty much, you know, pressing straight up through the drill bit there. So really nice for an early design. And the 12 volt, she is actually an inline motor design. So this, this thing here isn't for the drop motor, it's just for the battery. This is my first M12 tool. And I gotta say, I'm not super impressed with this uh, battery style here, this post. Fuck. And I gotta say, this style of battery, uh, it's not the best. I mean, it's a bit more fiddly and it takes up more room in the tool. So they've needed this whole separate thing here, which, you know, doubles as a handle, but Basically, there's a reason why pretty much every tool maker has gone in favor of slide batteries, even for their 12 volt tools. And yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's fine once you get used to it. Uh, something else you gotta get used to is the battery indicator being on the tool, not on the battery. And that's not my preferred way of doing it because I wanna know which battery to bother putting in the tool in the first place. So, you know, hopefully Milwaukee does get their shit together and do that on their 12 volt batteries too at some point. But other than that, she is a really nice little tool to have in your hand. Designed to be one-handed, they don't even give you a, a side handle with it. And she's even more comfortable than the 18 volt version because it's slightly swept upwards. So it really fits in your hand nicely. All right, so let's take a look at the specs. So the M12CH is in Australia anyway, about 340 bucks compared to the M18 which is around 250. So big price difference there. Of course, these are dollar e dues. All right, and the weight. So according to my scale, the M12 is 1.4 kilos and the M18 is 1.99, so two kilos. So the capacity, uh, that is not 13 sixteenths of an inch, that is 13 millimeters or 16 millimeters, depending on where you are. So I know the UK version is 13, so that's like half inch basically. Um, but everywhere else I've seen, 16 millimeters is what they go by, or, you know, like 5 eighths. And the model I have here is actually the UK version, because, you know, that's how online shopping goes sometimes. I just went for the cheapest one I could get. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a half-inch drill bit to match, you know, all the other drill bits I've got uh, for these tests. So, uh, I'm just treating this as a 16 for the time being. Impact energy, they reckon 1.1 joules versus 1.35. Impacts per minute, bloody hell, super fast. So 6575 for the M12 and 7000 for the M18. That has got to be the highest impact rate out of any hammer I've ever seen. Really, really cool stuff. And the RPM, they reckon the M12 revs at 900 and the M18 revs at 1300. So grab the old taco and let's see what they actually do. All right, about 860, so pretty close. And this guy, oh, that's right, turn. Yeah, so the chuck collar doesn't actually turn on this one. Let's grab an adapter. All right, around 11.30. All right, so let's get drilling. Now, compact hammers are designed for small bits. So for the little hammers, I'm gonna be doing an eight millimeter drill test. So it's about a third of an inch. And I'm no longer using the preformed blocks. I've got some concrete that I poured, uh, 32 MPA. So let's see how they go.
Alrighty, so they ended up very, very similar for that test. 16.67 versus 16.92. The M18 slightly ahead of the M12. So you can see how tight it must be in the hole there. <laughs> Settle down, fellas. So that kind of thing can be a bit of a struggle for these little hammers if you don't pull the dust out, which of course during a speed test, I don't do. So it's looking like a 12 volt fuel is pretty similar to an 18 volt brushed. All right, so moving on, our next test is a 12 by 80 millimeter speed drill. So this is gonna be a standard test I do with all my hammers going forward. So, you know, every single one I test, it'll do this test and we should be able to get a really good idea of how they all stack up against each other. And why 12 by 80? Well, because that's what you gotta drill for my favorite bolt, the 12 by 75 mil flush head. All right, so on the 12 by 80 millimeters, the uh, M18 is in front again, but with a bigger lead this time, 17.44 seconds averaging up a few of those runs, and 19.07 for the M12. So it's starting to look like the higher impact force of the, uh, of the bigger tool there is actually, uh, you know, making a difference. All right, so the next test is the max capacity. So these guys are rated to 16 millimeters, about 5 eighths, or if you're in the UK, a little bit less. Here we go with the 16 millimeter drill bit. Once again, go on 80 mil. Let's see how they go. All right, now we're talking. Now we are really starting to see the difference in impact force. Uh, the M18, 28.72 seconds, and the M12 a bit more leisurely at 36.16. And finally, we've got a bit of a bonus test. So recently I did a 12 volt showdown with this versus a Makita and DeWalt, uh, and I finished that one off with a big deep drill. So this is 10 by 200 mil. And so I just did that with this guy as well. Same bit of concrete, new drill bit for him. And uh, let's see how that goes. Alrighty, so same pattern as before. We got the M18 just ahead of the M12, but both of those are behind the Makita brushless drill and also the DeWalt. And also if you wanna see the actual 12 volts showdown video where I compare these three guys, uh, go check that out here. So this deep drill test is a bit artificially difficult. You know, like if you're drilling really deep, the hole's gonna bind up with dust and basically you just pull it out to clear the dust out a bit. But during speed tests, I can't do that because otherwise, you know, it ruins the timing. So, you know, Milwaukee doesn't make weak tools, but what I think is going on is basically they've designed this guy especially to not be too talky because, I mean, it's one-handed. They don't even give you a, a, a second handle. You know, this is designed to be used one-handed and uh, yeah, they basically don't want you getting hurt if the thing binds up and, you know, Oh, applies a bit of torsion to your wrist there. So, you know, it's not like Milwaukee's making uh, weak tools. They're just, you know, not the sort of tools where you would want too much torque for safety reasons. So, you know, it's perfectly fine. And the other thing to note about the performance of these tools is of course, they're pretty old models. Like this one is second gen, uh, but you know, it's eight years old now. So probably due for an upgrade. And the 18 volt, I mean, this is still a brushed tool. This is first gen, I'm pretty sure for this guy. But the good news is if you're hanging out for a new version of this, it's probably on the horizon because, well, uh, like with the one inch rotary hammers, they've actually gone and released a Ryobi version of the brushless guy. But good news is there's probably a brushless version of this on the horizon because Ryobi, which is also owned by TTI, the parent company in Milwaukee, uh, they just have released a brushless compact hammer. 
Ryobi One looks pretty good. Of course, it's not out here in Australia yet, but uh, you know, I'm looking forward to giving her a try when she comes out. And uh, you know, more importantly for us, this gives us a look at what to expect for the upcoming Milwaukee version. So if you are looking for one of these, uh, should you wait? Well, it depends on how urgently you need it, really. Uh, there's been no announcement for a new one yet, as far as I know. So it could be a year or a year and a half, maybe. Don't know. But hey, if you want one of these, you know, nothing wrong with this at all. She goes pretty good. She's pretty cheap. Still, you know, good Milwaukee quality. And the brushless version is no doubt going to be super expensive. I mean, this guy is 340 bucks. Compared to 250, I reckon the brushless version of this is going to run you probably 350, something like that. So it's going to be expensive. Anyway, Hammerheads, these guys may not hit as hard as some of the newer competitors, but you know what? I do love a little rotary hammer, and I bet you will too. Plus, Milwaukee gets big props for, you know, pretty much starting the whole subcompact rotary hammer genre, which is sort of what, <laughs> what started my whole YouTube channel as well. It's just realizing how good these little guys are and wanting to bloody tell everyone. <laughs> And uh, be sure to smash that subscribe button and let me know what you reckon below. So anyway, thanks for watching and as always, scratch you later.